what we're going to do now is show you how to take the rugs off of the loom when they're finished. Uh, that's a very important job and we have to make sure that we um, don't lose any of the lines uh, through the beater bar when we're doing this. So there'll be a, uh, I'll be moving a lot of the warp forward so that we make sure that uh, none of it goes back through there so that when we are re-warping the loom, we just have to tie the threads on. We don't have to go through all of the uh, mechanisms here. So the first thing I do is put the ratchet handle down. Now, uh, the, the lever back there, Charlotte, if you'll lift that lever up, okay, hold it up. So what I'm going to do, yeah. Okay. See, I'm going to roll, I'm rolling this down. Using this to pull and wrap the last rug around the cloth rug. Okay, I'm going to get a lot of the warp thread so that none of this will fall back. So now the, the last rug is rolled onto the cloth roll, and we're ready to cut this, this, the strings. Uh, Charlotte, you can let go of that, and I'm gonna need you over here. The next step, when we cut off the strings, what we have to do is count, what we, we count 10 strings, cut them, and tie them in a slip knot to uh, hold them so they don't go through the beater bar. Okay, so we got that. So what you do is count 10 strings. <coughs> And this gets a little tedious one. You could only check start going from each end. Seven, eight, nine, Now let's double count. scary part <laughs> and then I just tie it in a slip knot like that so that they're not going anywhere okay so count your ten get it down here hold it onto them Yep, yep. Tie the knot up top. Here. Okay, now the next step is to pull the rugs off. These two um, help us to move the rugs forward, but when we want to take them off, we lift that up and it loosens the cloth roll so we can roll, unroll the rugs from the cloth roll. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay. okay. Yep. And now, see? Let me just start rolling the rug. Roll. more on than usual because we had some scrap material that wouldn't be enough to make one rug with one pattern so Steve and I put some stripes in. We can't do that when we have the school children because they, uh, it involves changing the shuttles too many times and since we are pressed for time during the, the session with the kids we just keep it simple with them. Too big. 
I may cut to cut this in between my two rolls. Yeah. We could do one more rug and then this is getting big. in between just, just pull that strip out this one we can pull if yeah. I can pull it out it might not maybe yes it's, it's in there too, too tight yeah You can let that down. No, you don't I have do. to hold those. Yeah. <laughs> it's have to be better because it won't move then. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, I yeah, well, I'm just close enough. I think it's good. You look good. But you know what? It might be easier enough. Yeah. Tighten it. Easier. Can you pull the roll of rugs you have a little tighter? Or if you want to pull yep. it, I'll cut yeah, it. If you can cut that, then I'll hold it now. Yeah, that. that's good. Missed a couple. Yep. Got to go back. I yep. do that all the time. Yeah, this will be good. Because that will okay. get, get on the other side. That was the easy part. Yeah. This was a nice one too. I like this yeah. one. This neutral one. That's my favorite though coming yeah. up. Of the dawn. Of this roll. Yeah. That's a pretty one. Mm -hmm. Another one. Yep. Somebody left a pin in it, but could oh, be oh, could be pull sold. It. Why don't you pull no, it I don't want to pull it because if it's uh, sometimes we sell the rugs, and if they put the name of the person who's buying it, I don't see anything there. What are you? They just at? left the pin in. No, it's keep rolling. And the pin's here. No, a little farther. No, it's I have my finger on oh, the you pin. Have your finger on. Yeah, so they just left the pin in. Which wasn't a good thing. No. But usually, if we sell them, they'll um, mark it too. Oh, oh sorry. I lost my head. <laughs> Thinking about other things. <laughs> Gotta be getting know. to the gotta be Maybe getting to the end sooner or later. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Ah, I see. There's the. There it is. Okay. Uh, there's the Okay. You want more? No, I guess that's it. There, no, there, there it is. I might have to come around. I just didn't know how far you Yeah, I'll have to, just to get that rod right there. Okay. Let them go now? Yep. Okay. Okay. And all you have to do is just a little cut. Scissors are best. Yeah, cut there. this. Just anywhere because it's going to come off. Yeah. Oh, I can see where this method is much easier than threading everything. Oh, yeah. Well, well it's just that Steve ends up tying 220 knots. Oh, I know. And then after he does that, he has to tension. Everything. Okay. Now we just put this down. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll take those. Um, I'll take those threads off because we. Let me. You want to bring it up on the recipe? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> See, he he does. I don't have all uh, these. I, I have have to be re-instructed every time to do the knots because uh -huh. I forget. Here, give me your handful. Here's the other. Let me get this throw away. Can wrap that, roll that, and can you just roll it. I don't want it to drag on the floor. Mm. That's good. Yep. Ta da! That's it. Woo! Thank <laughs> you.
Where would you like this? Yeah. Oh, we got it in there. Um, it's going to go next right next to this one. Wrong feet facing that way. Oh, you're staying in there? <laughs> Betty's in jail. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks really good. Uh, uh, yeah. Don't say it. Yeah, this side, yeah. This side, yeah. The right. You want the outside ones or the inside? No, no, yeah. You can do one racket at a time. Oh, one, okay. Gotcha. Pretty standard. Well, what we might want to do is just get. Yeah. And when we load them on, you can have the line coming off over the top on all of them. them all rolling in the same direction as we pull the lines. That's why we're having them consistently. You either have to choose all the way up, all over the top or all over the bottom. I think, it's, I think they work better over the top. Thank you. That saves the bed. Thank you. You do three on the three and three? Yes. Three on the top row. After that it's all four. That way it works out to 110 evenly. When did they set up On the racks. Each rack. Fill the remaining um, dowels, except the bottom one. That's an extra, just in case we ever needed it for some reason. It was there. It's easier to put it on when you're making the thing than to try to rebuild it later. Top row, and it's only only because well, that's the number it works out evenly. But also, the top row has these little corners in it. I didn't want it to interfere, so yeah. well, yeah. put the um, put, you the, put the three put the on that. Yeah. Now I pull this one off. Put it on there. Okay. Got that show. Put it up on there. Yep, mm -hmm. every last one. Our line runner is pulling the line that, uh, from the spool that's the furthest to the right on the first rack. The very top um, row of four spools on that side of the rack. And she's going to bring it down to me at the loop. Very good. And down here at the loom, the furthest, we start at the furthest um, left side of the, the reeds. And in that reed, there are actually two lines. We have two lines there to keep the edge of the um, rug a little stronger than the, the rest of the lines. We're gonna pull one of those two lines right now for that first line that we got from the warp rack. And we're gonna tie that on now with a square knot to the line that just came from the warp rack. There's our square knot. We pull it tight to make sure it's square. And that line is now done. 
So then Betty is going to pull the next line down in that column of spools from the All right. And I'm going to locate the second line in that furthest left reed, which I've now got here. And again, we're going to tie the square knot. Now we've got the two lines in that furthest left reed um, all tied off and accounted for. So now we can start with the single lines through the rest of it, this bundle of 10 lines that we had here. Then he's pulling the next line down in that column of spools. And I'm going to locate that next line in the sequence. So it's the next reed over. And it'll be this line here. As always, we tie a square knot. Can imagine having to attach it to the wheel. Okay, and lo locate the next line to the right in the reeds. Betty pulls the next line down in the column of spools. And we tie it off. Also might want to say that at this point maybe we can have one person stand behind a spot to make yeah. sure that as we unwind the spool it doesn't come off and wind around the dowel because then it will give us a problem. And we've moved over to the next line in the set of reeds as we move down the column of spools in the rack. This is the first line. It's uh, on the first row of four spools farthest to the right when you're facing the rack. Then you go down right below it to the second line, the third line right below that, the fourth below that, the fifth below that. I'm working on the sixth one now, and I'll work all the way down that column until I get to the end of that row or column. Then, the next one we start up on the top, where we only have three spools, and go all the way down from the top to the bottom. Pull the slip mat on the next bundle of lines to start the next set of 22 lines in here. Excuse me, 10 lines in here. It's 22 bundles, 10 lines in each. And this process does prevent the lines from interfering with each other and getting tangled up. Now, did you make the rack? Yeah, I designed and made the, the rack in this whole process. How did they do it before? Um, well, right alongside of us here on the barn wall, there's a device called a warping frame. And you would load a um, line onto a warp paddle and go back and forth across that warping frame, laying out line, which you could then pull off the frame and store temporarily um, in braids. And then you would pretty much do the same process that we're doing here with tying on individual lines to the, to the loom. But as you unbraided those lines, they would invariably get profoundly tangled. And it would take forever to try to sort through and comb out the tangles. And it would drive everybody doing the process a little bit crazy. So that's what kind of motivated this uh, change in procedure here. Also, you tied them onto the warp roll back there. Everything had to be threaded through the eyelets there, one on the one harness, then the second harness, then brought through the reed. <coughs> if you worked it right, you could still do it this way, yeah, but they but often but didn't. They didn't. <laughs> so, so that just made life just even a little more miserable.
right now we have all the lines tied and what we're doing is cutting the, uh, where we had tied the knots, we're cutting those little tails off so that um, they won't get tangled when they go through the heddles to get wound down to the warp. So if I could find one of those that we left, just to show you how. Towards the middle. Towards the middle, thank you. <laughs> See, there's a little bit of a tail here. If we leave that, I'll try and get my fingers out of the way. If we leave that, uh, it could get caught in the heddles when we pull it back. So we want to cut that a little close to the end. And we had four, I think. We want to do that carefully so that we don't cut the knots that have been tied. We just want the tails. No great tragedy, we can always retie. No, we can be retied, but after tying 220 knots, we <laughs> want to give already. a little break. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the last. I think we had just four. There we go. Okay. So now all the tails have been cut off. And we put these uh, rattles on to, when we start rolling the threads onto the warp reel, this will help keep the tension so that they'll go smoothly. It's going to go on top like this. And we'll tension that down before we start pulling that. Okay. Okay. Do you want to they have to, they be? Have to be tied down? Yeah. If they just sat on top, they would pull off as soon as we started the first move. And you couldn't use nails or screws. Well, because you want it to be able to move a little bit, right? Yeah, not only that, but I don't want to damage yeah. the the loom because we. Yeah. These will come off. I try not to do anything that's irreversible on the loom. And once these are tied down, then we'll be ready to start pulling the thread on the, the warp thread on the warp reel in the back. And for this procedure, we have someone back at the spools. <laughs> to make sure that none of the spools get wrapped around the dowel so that the threads move smoothly. We have someone watching um, on the side to make sure that nothing is drooping and one person pulling through onto the warp reel. And we use three, one over the first, uh, the farthest, the uh, closest to the warp threads coming on. Then we put one underneath and then one over so there's a, gives some tension when we're pulling the threads. It's really like pressure bars, really. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's what it is. It has to be loose enough too, though, right. so that yeah. the knots can get through. Right, exactly. Another reason why we cut the tail so that yeah. that's yeah. close. And you don't want to have too much pressure because it could start fraying. Right. Fraying yeah. the, the yeah. string too. Yeah, because once the knots are through, it's just re regular thread. So we're not worried about that. Yeah. 
see if he's one of these lines suddenly goes very taut. Alright. If, if you see that, just they'll stop. <laughs> and the person doing the rolling, which probably will be me, will be uh, stop, stop, stop <laughs> immediately. Mm -hmm. And then we need one person behind each one of the backs just to visually check that the lines are coming off the top of the spool and not falling off the sides and you, know, you see what happens when right. they roll off mm -hmm. the edges. That's when you'll get the top. Yeah. Okay. So two down here. I've right. uh, got to release one one the one. ratchets on the torque wheel. So it'll roll freely. You want to watch it? I'll watch it. Okay. Oh, whatever. Okay. Tie this oh, whatever. Yeah. You're right, don't get that with it. Just on the ratchet wheel. point I will have to stop periodically to put these wooden slats um, into the roll. So you may hear me just say stop for a moment so we can put more slats in. But it looks like at this point we're ready to go. So I'm just going to start pulling here. Lots of all come through. to show where we started the, yeah. the work. Twisted on one of the rolls.
already loaded on just the past few minutes. That was the last set of slats that went in and we've already got a fair amount of line loaded up on it. So we have rolled on enough uh, warp onto the, the warp reel on the back of the loom to last us for several seasons. So at this point we're ready to take the lines that we've rolled from the um, warp racks to oh, back to the warp reel, ready to cut them off and separate everything from the, the warp racks now so the loom is independent. So we're just going to grab our scissors and trim through several sets of lines at a time. And we make sure that the lines are long enough so they don't fall through the, the reeds back on the loom. Okay, now that all the lines are cut, what we want to do is bundle them um, into 22 groups of 10 lines each. Um, so that way, um, when, they, when we do remove the rattles, there's still, again, no way that they can fall through the reeds. Just going to count out 10 lines starting from one end of the warp here and start bundling them. And we just tie them into a slip knot temporarily just to hold things in place. Steve, do you want Charlotte to start on the other end so that Maybe we could certainly do that, yeah. sure. Charlotte, you can do that because I've got it. Okay. <coughs> the bar, it's really important to make sure that they don't go on the rods that are going through the other ones because this one got wound. Coming all the way from this. show you know, this um, cloth bar, 
cloth roll down below here um, has a bar hanging off of it. And this is where we're going to attach all the warp lines to. Um, we're going to tie them on and tension them to that. But right now, it, it, it's too uh, firmly wrapped around the cloth roll. We need to get this up around the, the breast beam. So in order to release the tension on it, we have to lift the, both the ratchet and the pole on the cloth roll and then turn the wheel so that we release the tension on the, that bar and roll it back, keep rolling it back until we have enough slack on it to get it up above the breast beam. So I'm gonna keep rolling a little further. Okay, we can release the ratchet and pole again. And now you see that we have enough um, line back on the cloth bar to reach over to the uh, top of the breast beam. So at this point I'll go back up onto the bench and start tying on the lines. All cloth bar resting on top of the breast beam. We start near the center of the uh, bundles of warp lines and release the slip knot on one of them. And start tying on. So what we do is we take the 10 lines, we split them into two groups of five now. There's one, there's the other. And we start pulling on the lines in each one of the groups to tension them off of the warp roll in the back. Okay, this group seems to be fairly evenly tensioned. We'll work on the other five. Slowly pulling on them both as a group and then individually within the group if you see one bunching up. Okay, the two groups seem to be pretty well evenly tensioned now. We take the lines, wrap one group around the cloth bar um, so that the lines come off on this, on this one to the right. And we take the next group. This is the left group of five lines. Again, we wrap that around the cloth bar. This time the lines are going to come off from the bottom around the left. And now we start tensioning the group of ten. Again, pulling on the lines, making sure they're all still even. And that feels pretty good. So now what we're going to do is do half of the surgeon's knot. We're going to do the first part of it. And knot those two loose ends of groups of five together. And at this point we can still Tension the lines if we feel any slack in there anywhere. The lines, the knot is still a loose knot. All right, so now that that initial bundle in the center of the cloth uh, bar here is completed, we can move over to, to another set of bundles. Usually we start either to the right or to the left of that, whichever you prefer. So we take the line, we pull the slip knot out again. And just as before, we're going to break the bundle of 10 into groups of five. One on your left, one on the right. And again, start tensioning each of the individual lines in that bundle of five. Okay, so I started on the left and I feel that all five of those lines are pretty equally, equally tensioned. Start on the right bundle now of five. And pull the lines individually and as a group. And it's feeling like those are pretty well tensioned as well now. So again, we lift that cloth bar a little bit and wrap 
one group of five around the bar and pull the bundle off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing with the left bundle. And lift the bar, wrap the lines around the bar. And on this one, the bundle is going to come off the left side. And we'll pull that tight. And then check the tension again. Make sure all the lines are still coming in with equal tension. That feels pretty good. So again, now we're going to partially tie the surgeon's knot here, but leave it loose. And pull that tight. Now I'm going to try to keep these equally um, tensioned across the the uh, warp lines here. So since I just worked to the left before, and now I'm going to jump, jump over to the right hand uh, bundle of lines. And we'll start tying and tensioning those. Again, we pull the slip knot, break it off into two sets of five bundles, and start pulling and tensioning again. those bundles feel pretty good. So now we can wrap them again around the cloth ball bar. All right, so we've finally finished tying off all the lines um, onto the cloth bar and tensioning them. So we've got nice, even tension across all the bundles of lines. So the only thing left in this process now is to finish off the knots on the um, surgeon knot here with a square knot. She's probably got all the knots and really just so you don't really feel. Well, actually, we can leave that out. You're going to have to roll it over here. through so that these lines sort of even out, they're no longer um, quite so severely angled into those bundles. And back up. And just continue so that this part. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. for cardboards, basically. Even this out a little bit, but that'll, the cardboards will help separate them anyway. Okay. And the lines are pretty well straightened them out. So it's like straighten themselves out here already. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. So we're set for re weaving now for the next season. Yep. We are getting ready to cut the rugs apart that have been woven on the loom. And we'll just start with the first one here and then I'll unroll, well, I'll unroll it around. So many strings. <laughs> 
cardboard and do all the strings at once but I find it easier to see what I'm doing on one side and then go back and do the other. You need to tie all these strings at the end of the rug to make sure the rug doesn't unbind. So make, making sure that the last warp is tight in place and then you start on one end or the other and you work towards the middle. You do a few on one end and then go to the other end so that when you get to the center if you have any odd number of threads, they just won't show up as much as it would on the end. Do six, uh, the first six threads on each end, and then you do five, 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 and until you get into the center and finish it off. So we'll start with six over here. Six. And you're just baking a basic knot when you twist run it over and then through the center but the important thing is to get it up as close to you can as you can to the last stitch so that it holds the rug together so that the rug won't begin to unravel as it is used. So we did six there, and then we'll go to five for the rest of the time. I'm going to do one more on this end. You know how to count to five by the time you finish. If you didn't know before. I'm going to do one more here and then I'll go to the other end and try and start finishing that off.
And then we'll go to five. It's kind of a, it's a concentrating thing, at least for me. 